Dogs and art illustrate the relationship between humans and nature, a popular topic through the ages. Dogs embodied nature, wild, untamed, uncivilized. Humans, on the other hand, were seen as civilized beings. Early artists depicted dogs as human helpers, proof that dogs can be trained and civilized. But dogs were also represented as creatures quite capable of reverting to their wild state. An ancient myth is shown on the belly of a vase made in Greece in the 5th century BC. The principal characters are Artemis, a Greek goddess, and Actaeon, a hunter. He's on the right. Artemis, the goddess of hunting, was bathing in the woods. Actaeon saw her. She was angry about him seeing her naked, so she had his dogs kill him, although here she too gets involved with her bow and arrows. The lesson about dogs? They can be human helpers, but they can turn against the humans they are trained to serve. A marble sculpture made in Rome in the first century offers a gentler side of dogs. Two greyhounds engage in playful and affectionate behaviour with each other. Centuries later, around 1530, the Venetian painter Titian portrayed the Duke of Mantua with one of his dogs. The Duke was said to own over a hundred dogs that he used mostly for hunting. His Maltese dog is asking for attention, but the Duke does not immediately respond. With a firm but not hard hand on the dog to still it, he looks calmly out at the viewer. The Duke's relationship with his dog alludes to his ability to rule kindly yet firmly. Titian also painted the Duke's sister, Eleonora Gonzaga, the Duchess of Urbino. She too has a dog, but the meaning is different when it accompanies a woman. A dog symbolises a woman's faithfulness and loyalty to her husband and family. The dog rests, but with open eyes, demonstrating a woman's duty to guard her virtue. Franz Snyders, a 17th century Flemish painter, liked to paint dogs in narratives, showing how fragile the veneer of civilization is for both dogs and humans. The guard dog on the left has allowed a stray dog to enter the kitchen and seize a joint of meat. The wild behavior of the stray has inspired the domesticated guard dog to abandon its training and tuck into the sausages. They have overturned the basket of fruit and broken a precious porcelain plate. A cat watches on the far right, waiting for leftovers. From the 19th century onward, dogs appear in art as pets, civilized companions of humans, and as creatures capable of exhibiting human emotions and behaviors. In the early 19th century, French artist Marguerite Gerard painted a portrait of a middle-class family at home. The husband stands embracing his wife, but he is distracted by his dog, which has wandered into the picture and wants attention. The dog exhibits love and devotion toward its master. Its master is quite happy to reciprocate. English painter Edwin Landseer was famous for his paintings of animals. In The Old Shepherd's Chief Mourner, executed in 1837, Landseer teaches us two things. First, dogs can have admirable human qualities. The black and tan sheepdog mourns its master, a shepherd. The dog presses its chest as close as possible to the wooden coffin. It looks forlorn, its dark eyes misty, the ears lowered and tail close to its body. Second, the dog's love is a sign that the shepherd was a good man. Another English artist, John Sargent Noble, conveys a message about social inequality by using dogs to stand in for humans. In Pug and Terrier, painted in 1875, two dogs meet. The pug represents the rich. The terrier represents poor people, of which there were many in 19th century British cities. Some members of the upper classes, the artist felt, had never seen the poor. So, the well-fed pug, wearing a collar and gold ring, displays a startled expression on encountering the scruffy terrier mix, which carries a begging cup and has a rope as its leash. 